Hey, good morning, everyone. I would like to remind our participants that our virtual conference will start at exactly 9.30 a.m. today. So while waiting for the other participants to appear, allow me to greet our participants who are presently writing their whereabouts here in Zoom. We have Ma'am Irene E. Argilias. Malamig at maulan na umaga po sa lahat. Joining from Libungan, Cotabato. Okay, good morning, Ma'am. We also have Ma'am Maria Eliza Di Mapanoo. Good morning, Ma'am Eliza. Okay, we have again a great number of participants who came all the way from Camarine Sur and Bicol State University. So allow me also to greet our institutions with the most number of participants for today's gathering. We have number one for New Era University all the way from Quezon City. We also have a great participants from General De Jesus College in San Isidro, Nueva Ecija. We also have from Cebu Technological University in San Francisco campus, in San Francisco, Cebu, Barile, and other campuses of Cebu Technological University. We also have a participant, for, or a great number of participants, I mean, from University of Northern Philippines in Vigan City, Ilocos Sur. We have from Batanga State University, Biliran Province State University in Biliran Province. We have St. Joseph School Foundation Incorporated from Zamboanga City. We also have a great participants from different campuses of Cagayan State University, Capi State University, and Corregidor Elementary School. We also have a great participants from Eastern Visayas State University in Leyte, Lopeti Skial uh, Senior Central Elementary School, all the way from Libungan in Cotabato. We also have a great number of participants from Mindanao State University, Notre Dame of Marbel University, Philippine Normal University, and President Ramon Magsaysay State University. Okay, again, good morning to all of our participants who came all the way from different parts of the country, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. While waiting for other participants to appear here in Zoom, and also in YouTube, I would like to remind you of the following rules to follow in the whole duration of this conference. Again, number one, opening of camera is recommended. Two, always mute your microphone. Three, use headphones or earphones. Four, find a seat or location that is comfortable and well-lighted. It is advised to wear business or smart casual attire. You finish the whole virtual conference and complete the evaluation form for you to get your certificate. And seventh, always direct your concern through personally message or PM on our page or email address so we can provide answer to your concern. For the flow of our virtual conference, our day one will be comprised of two sessions. We will have a topic on conducting methodology review for qualitative research design from 9.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. And we will have a topic on using joint display analysis in mixed method research or MMR from 2 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. For our Saturday session, we will have a discussion on recalibrating research for the new normal using experimental design from 9.30 a.m. to 11 a.m and research publication in peer-reviewed journals and research presentation from 2 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. We are presently viewed on different social media platforms. We are presently live here in Zoom and in YouTube at the official channel of POMI. We also have a delayed telecast in Facebook at the official Facebook page of PISI21. Again, I am Mr. Rusel Brian Di Casella, a faculty member of the Social Science Department of Iloilo Science and Technology University. Welcome to another virtual gathering sponsored by the Philippine Institute of 21st Century Educators Incorporated or PAIS I-21. This is in collaboration with 11 other professional organizations. 
it is known to most of us that the making of a research is one way not only for us to elevate our academic rank, but venturing in it will surely help us improve in many ways. In a paper written by Phil McRae and Jim Parsons, they have cited that teachers have been and continue to be expert researchers. Research as a process of knowledge building inspires personal growth and development in individuals and groups. Teachers normally bring their expertise to their classroom, and by actively sharing the knowledge they have gained through research, they build a professional community and shape the minds within the community. The shaping of the minds, I believe, is a confirmation that the teacher, researcher, is already manifesting professional credibility and integrity. Most of us are always thinking of research as somewhat an additional burden in the heavy loads we have, and most would say that they are not confident with their process and methodology in the conduct of the research. It's already 9.30. I think it's ideal for us now to officially start our session for the morning session. Again, providing to you a little context to, want to answer one of the problems we have in the demand of this new normal, the Philippine Institute of 21st Century Educators, together with 11 other professional affiliated organizations, decided to come up with this national virtual conference for research with a team retooling research skills for professional credibility and integrity in the academe. This conference is designed for all educators in public and private elementary, secondary, and higher educational institutions. I am happy to see that we still have a great number of participants from different parts of the country, and we also have some participants from different parts of Asia. So, to formally start our conference, may I request everyone to be in silence for the prayer. Let us put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, we offer to you everything in this conference. We glorify you for this event and thank you for every person that is with us today. May you guide our speakers so that they would be able to effectively impart their God-given wisdom to all of us. May they be blessed as they continue to share their expertise to everyone who needs them. Continue to protect our nation and all of our brothers and sisters that we may be able to defeat this pandemic. Keep us safe, O Lord. Amen. To formally welcome us in this two-day virtual conference, let us have Professor Emi Jan P. Indonila Palmani, National President of PIES I-21, for her opening or welcome remarks. Let us give her a virtual round of applause. Thank you so much, Sir Jack. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Clear. To our participants, our co-21st century educators, to my partners in PIES 21, to our guest speakers who will be formally introduced later, a pleasant morning to all. According to the Department of Education and Training in Sydney, Australia, research is the creation of new knowledge and or the use of existing knowledge in a new and creative way so as to generate new concepts, methodologies, and understanding. From its prefix re, which means again, research is to search again what had existed or even those that are existing at present that most of us set aside but have great impact to the betterment of not just ourselves but of the community, the society, our country, and the world. We are living in a dynamic world where everything changes. We may stop the clock but not time. We may stop aging, but not our age. Others may stop dreaming, but they cannot stop us on searching. Searching for new knowledge that would help humankind reach its potentials that could help make positive changes here on earth. 
This is the beauty of research, ladies and gentlemen. It seeks knowledge, selfless knowledge, for it benefits not just the researchers themselves, but everyone and everything in this mortal world as well. However, there are still lots of people, teachers, educators to be specific, who are still hesitant in conducting research because for them, research eats too much of their time, too much of their efforts and money, and so many reasons. For them, in short, research is too difficult for them that they don't want to conduct. Wait. No. Oh. Okay, can you still hear me? Okay, ma'am. Uh, okay. It's already okay, ma'am. Okay, so again, that's the, the beauty of research. It seeks knowledge again. What kind of knowledge? It's selfless knowledge because it benefits not just the researchers, but everyone and everything in this mortal world. However, we have a problem. There are still lots of people who are still hesitant in conducting research. Because again, for them, research is too difficult to do. It eats too much of their time, their effort and money and so many reasons. Others don't want to conduct even just a single study or others may conduct because of promotion and not because of their passion. Thus, PIES 21, ladies and gentlemen, wants to help you to see the beauty of research, that it is not that the it is not that hard as long as you do it wholeheartedly with your burning passion to our beloved profession. Everybody has the skills in conducting research. We just need to explore our potentials. And then one day, you will just realize that you are having fun. You are enjoying your life and your profession with credibility and integrity because you have contributed something worthy in the academe and in the world. We have four topics for this two-day webinar, and I am very happy and honored that we have four experts in the field of research who will serve as our speakers for the topics that we have prepared for you. I am sure that at the end of this webinar, we will all love research and will embrace it wholeheartedly with credibility and integrity, for we are teachers. We are educators, the molders of the world. In behalf of the PIES 21 committee, I, Mrs. Emijan and Dunila Palmani, welcome you all to our national virtual conference for research with the theme, Retooling Research, Skill, Retooling research Skills for Professional Credibility and Integrity in the Academe. Let us all continue our support to the PIES 21 organization and to the other organizations that we have. Let us all keep on learning and always look for the good in everything. Thank you so much and mabuhay. Okay, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Professor Emi John P. Indonila Palmani, National President of PAIS I-21. Before I formally introduce to your speaker, I would like everyone listening to the different platforms we have to effectively and responsibly use the chat function in raising your questions. You can write your questions or insights while our speaker is having his discussion, but expect it to be answered during the question and answer portion. We will be having the open forum after the speaker's presentation. To those who would like to personally ask questions, you may also press the raise hand button and we will be notifying you ahead if you are recognized. During the open forum session, we will be forwarding to you a link from Slido or Slido.com. You can scan the code or type the code for your questions to be catered. Thank you. It is now time for me to introduce to you our first speaker. Our speaker for this morning is presently the designated University Director for Knowledge and Technology Management, or KTM, of the Research, Development, and Extension of Cagayan State University in Tugigarao City since 2018. 
and concurrently the campus research coordinator of Cagayan State University at Lasam. He is occupying the faculty rank of assistant professor for. He started charting his career as a private elementary school teacher at San Lorenzo Ruiz Educational Institute private school head at Lasam Academy Incorporated, faculty of the School of Education, Arts and Sciences of the University of St. Louis to Gigarao, to a faculty and administrator of Cagayan State University. He has obtained his PhD in educational management at the age of 23 in 2013. Master of Arts in Education, major in educational management in 2011. B.E.D. generally in 2010 and finish academic subjects for B.S. Ed English in 2013. He has published 29 research articles indexed in Scopus, Clarivate Analytics, and ASEAN Citation Index or ACI journals. He has an H index of six and an I10 index of three. Our speaker is also a seasoned presenter. He has presented researches in various international, national, and regional research conferences and symposia, and was awarded Best Research Presenter and Best Research Paper Awardee. He was awarded Distinguished Faculty Researcher of the Social Science Category of Cagayan State University. He pre presently serves as editor and reviewer of various SSCI, Web of Science Index, and Scopus Elsevier journals, such as International Journal of Learning, Teaching, and Educational Research, Sage Open, article editor and reviewer. Journal of Technology and Science Education, Studies of Applied Economics as a guest editor for Economics of Education, Eurasian Journal of Educational Research, Journal of Social Studies Education Research, and Asia-Pacific Journal of Multidisciplinary Research. He also co-authored five books, namely Research Methodology, Quantitative and Qualitative, a practical guide for researchers from gaps identification to publication. How to conduct action research in education. The teacher and community, school culture and organizational leadership. How to write and publish your thesis and how to write and publish your dissertation. He has engaged also in internally and externally internally or institutionally funded research projects of the Cagayan State University in collaboration with the government's different agencies, such as the Department of Science and Technology and the Department of Agriculture. He's an associate member of the National Research Council of the Philippines under Division I on governmental, educational, and international policies and was conferred as a fellow of the Royal Institute of Educators, Singapore. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Gilbert C. Magulo, Jr., PhD, LPT, FRI, DR. Good morning, Doc. Okay, so there was a technical problem in the case of our speaker. So uh, we will have first a time to read some of the greetings here of our participants while waiting for our speaker to, uh, to enter again or to re-enter. So we have here from Vicente or Sir Vicente. Good morning, greetings from the Lost Horizons of the South. 
Camotes Group of Islands, Cebu Technological University in San Francisco campus. So again, we have a great number of participants from Cebu Technological University. We also have here a participant who came all the way from Otabato. So we have again, we have a great number of participants in the areas of Mindanao. We also have Ma'am Soseline Batis Laong from Iloilo State College of Fisheries, Dingle Campus. Okay, good morning, ma'am. We also have Sir Jonathan Paga, Marahay Naaga, Salambang Saro, or good morning, everyone, from Bicol, or in, from Partido State University in San Jose Campus in Camarines Sur. Again, good, up, good morning, sir. We have Sir Resti Liagas, joining all the way from Ilocos Sur. Okay. We also have from La Salle, University on, in Osamis, Misamis Occidental. We have Sir Zell Oinotna. Good morning from Davao City here. Good morning, sir. We, we also have Sir Jib Brox Ranya. Mayong buntag from Zamboanga, Sibugay. Again, mayong aga sa tanan. I am greeting you in Ilongo or in Hiligaynon as I am all the way here uh, in the city of love, Iloilo. Mark John, good morning everyone from Puerto Galera Academy Incorporated, Puerto Galera Oriental, Mindoro. Good morning to all from Ires, Manila, Buyo Elementary School, La Castellana, Negros Occidental. Sir Paul, good morning, watching from Nueva Ecija University of Science and Technology. We also have a participant from University of Southern Mindanao. Good morning, everyone, from the city of San Jose del Monte, Bulacan, from Mam Desiree. We also have Sir Elinuel Hinova. Good morning from Carlos Hilado Memorial State College from Binalbagan Campus. I think our speaker is already with us. Good Doc, morning, Magulod, are you with us now? Hello. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir, I can hear you now. Good morning, Are we sir. okay now, sir? Yes, sir. Uh -oh. Okay. Now, okay. Sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, are we done with the opening prayer? Kasi medyo delay kasi tayo na nakapasok. Uh, uh, sorry, sir. We are now on the discussion proper. Okay. We were able to introduce you already and we okay. were able already to start the program. Okay, let me share my slide, please. My slide. Okay. Okay. So, nakikita po ba ang slide natin? Magandang umaga po sa atin, sa ating mga research enthusiasts, sa mga knowledge seekers. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I am Dr. Gilbert Magulod Jr. of Cagayan State University. I, uh, I come from the Northern Philippines. To our participants coming from Visayas, Mindanao, Luzon, magandang umaga po. So, the topic given to me, is conducting methodological review for qualitative research. Uh, it's just uh, like this one that sometimes when you do research, the method was is not given priority or it's not really given the, the focus. Since when you talk of research, when you talk of science, we talk of a sound or scientific process of data gathering. So let me begin with the learning activation process with this so that we could uh, start. Uh, we have here a slide. I am requesting you to please answer this one through an active polling. And so that I may be able to set the tone for today's presentation. So the question is, what makes a research paper, thesis, or action research scientifically sound? 
You can go to slido.com, then you can also scan there. Or go to slido.com, uh, put sign number or hashtag 361943. So what makes a research paper, thesis, or action research scientifically sound? We do not have yet uh, responses. Okay. Anyone? We have 160 participants. Okay. So, wag po kayong magalala kasi hindi po natin nakikita yung mga pangalan ninyo, no? Okay. So, what makes a research paper? Yan, by questioning. When the process was done systematically, that's, that's true. It is based on facts treated with appropriate methodology. It follows a scientific process because research, the nature of research is science. It's really a process of science. What else? We have eight answers here. So relevant to the needs of time, somewhat or something that is finding facts and bias. Okay, in both sound, statistics, computation. Okay, so involves, yeah, this is the, uh, the research method, instruments, and results are valid. Follows the process systematically. Okay, so we have one, we have 12 responses coming from our 164 of 15 na. Okay, so padaanan lang natin na basahin yung mga responses po ninyo, no? It solves the problems, follows the method, it follows a systematic process, solution to the problem, scientifically then the, the, the design used is appropriate. It solves the problem. Okay, so let's move to the next question. Napakaganda po ng mga sagot natin. The next one is, how do we usually find the gap in a research? How? The question is how? How? This is an open survey, open active poll po tayo. You can put all your answers, okay? Using review of related literature, okay? Extensive review of literature. That's right. Okay. Tignan po natin kung RRL by reading and basing on the related literature, observations, finding differences on the variables, related literature and studies, or the RRS, utilizing, utilizing the, or seeking help from tools of research, okay? Finding differences in the variables, by means of reading conclusions and an RRL that based on opinion but data, utilizing RRS, tama po. Okay, marami pa pong sumasagot sa atin. So 18, 18 responses. Thank you very much. Sige, the next question will be this one. What do you think, okay, is the best method or design for a research. For a research. Sige, i-include na po natin ang quality at quantity dito. Though the topic given to me is on qualitative research design. But I'd like to ask you, what do you think is the best method or design for a research? Okay, it depends upon the focus of investigation, mixed method, none. Okay? Pwede. Uh, one that is appropriate to a particular study, nature of the study, the one that will satisfy the research questions or problems, the method to be used depends on the nature of the study, mixed method. I agree, uh, there is no such thing as best method unless you combine different methods or designs, okay? And it depends really on the problem of the research. Different topics, depends on the nature of the study, okay? 
So marami pong sumasagot sa atin dito ng mixed method, experimental, depending on the nature of the research. Totoo po. Okay, so that's correct. So the topic given to me is conducting a methodological review for qualitative research design. Sometimes, when we do research, when we require our students to do research, we just only focus on the problems. We just only focus on the literature review. But we, oh, uh, uh, at times, we forget to focus on the method. Okay? So I'd like to show you this one, that in this side, we have the parts of a thesis, the title, the abstract, the introduction, the background, the problem, uh, statement of the problem, the rational or question, the review of related literature, methodology, methods, implication, chapters, recommendations, and references. So this is actually the Germanic form of a, of a research or a thesis. But when we require our students to do research, especially research proposal, meron po yan chapters 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so ang tinitignan po natin dyan is, do the students is capable to understand the nature of the problem? Do we require or are we really conversant or are we really uh, capable to understand the specific method we use for our specific research? Okay, so uh, Dr. Maricel Lamoseri, are you raising your hands? Okay, so ito po yung Germanic part of the thesis kung saan ito la pa yung titignan natin but sometimes we forget to focus on method. So what I would like to specify this time is when we conduct research or when we do research, we need also to look at the literature review of the method or we call it as the methodological review. Since this will allow us to understand what is new with the method, what is not new with the method, and at the same time, what is uh, the thing that you need to explore more about the method. And Type, you can see the parts of published research article, which it is composed of introduction, materials and methods, results and discussion. So in other countries, before a student can defend his master's or dissertation, that student should be able to publish at least a literature review of, the, of his or her proposed research and a methodological review of his or her research. Remember that if we are researchers, we are not, uh, we are experts, right? We are experts of the field. So if we use a certain methodology in our research or our thesis or dissertation, it follows that we are capable to use it. And we really understand the nature of the method. And this requires us that as researchers, as Filipino scholars or researchers, we need also to do a review of the methods to be used in a certain research study project or a program. Okay, so my, in my experience as a paper reviewer of Web of Science and Thomson Reuters uh, index journals, these are the reasons why papers are being rejected. First, the faulty research methodology. Sabi natin kanina, research is all about science and science should be based on scientifically sound process. Okay? So that uh, hindi na po maulit yung mga problema natin like the process of uh, that Deng Baksha. Okay? So the next one is papers are being rejected because the lack of necessary details for readers to fully understand and repeat the method. If you would like to ask me which or what is the best research method for a particular research study, you can judge it by way of reading the article or by way of reading the research. And if the reader or the audience can understand and repeat the method, the method is good. The method is scientifically sound. Okay? For the third one, sometimes the inappropriate methodology na sabi na kanina ng ating mga participants ito in answering the statement of the problem. This is really the basic reason. 
So it, it, it is not an appropriate research method and it will not answer the statement of the problem, then it's not really a good research method. All right. And of course, <clears throat> uh, papers or articles are being rejected. Even the panel you know, in the graduate school, you, you try also to look at the methodology of your students. Sometimes using old methodology that has been surpassed by newer, more powerful methods that provide more robust results. So if the method is already old, the thing here is when we do a research, are we the researchers? Are we the researchers who are capable to understand what is new with the method? What are the weaknesses of the method? And what are the strengths of the method? So the topic given to me is conducting a methodological review for qualitative research design. So this time we focus on the qualitative uh, research design uh, because in, uh, my co-speakers will, for this two-day activity, they will also have topics on the use of mixed method research in publication and of course using experimental research design. So the topic lang po nag-given kasi sa akin is methodological review. <clears throat> okay, so let's proceed. In the part of a research, sa methodology rin po tayo nagpo-focus, we have the materials and the methods, and this is actually the chapter 3 of your old thesis, or if your Germanic thesis format. And for research article, this is actually the, uh, the, 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 the next part, the next to introduction. Okay, in the IMRAD format. That's why IMRAD stands for Introduction, Method, Results, and Discussion. So that, that is for research article. But for thesis or dissertation, it is the chapter uh, three of your research, of your paper. So I got this slide from University of the Philippines to Dr. Rico Ancog. So the materials and methods, the aim there is to describe your methodological choices that is enough detail so that a reader who is not involved in your study will know exactly what you did and why. So you can really uh, understand, fully understand if a paper has sound method if a reader reads the method and the reader uh, understands it exactly, the process, how the samples were taken, where the, where the study was conducted. This is actually on the method, materials and methods. And a good research method should be, should have the following characteristics, replicability and scientifically sound. That's why when we evaluate a research, we look at the method, if we repeat the method and it follows, at talagang, you can see the reliability of the result. That means to say that the research is good. That means to say that the research was conducted scientifically. Okay, so that is really the focus here. And how? How? In the chapter three, because I seldom see theses, dissertations, action researches that are citing uh, literature in chapter three. Kumbaga, kung gumagawa lang sila ng research, chapter 3, research design. The study used descriptive correlational research design. The study employed case study qualitative research design. You need also to put authors. You need also to put references in that way that it will give an impression that your paper is scientifically sound. Because no one has the monopoly of knowledge. We are all researchers here. No one has the monopoly of knowledge. We still need literature because there are already studies conducted about that method. And there are researchers who are experts out there who can provide us a better way to understand how to execute that research method in your particular research. So follow the format, cite sources of the common methods. And the most common uh, citation we get is from Creswell for qualitative research and quantitative research. Describe in more detail the uncommon methods, particularly when you use a method that is not really common. And you may need to cite some 
specs even for the common method. So the thing here is in what way that we do a review of the research methodology of our research. And this could be a good suggestion for those graduate school professors here or graduate school dean that aside from a review of the related literature and studies, we can also require our students to submit a methodological review of the research. Methodological review of the research. In fact, for a particular thesis or a particular dissertation, you can already generate three researches or research articles from it. We have the review articles. Review articles could be the literature review of the study. When you talk of uh, smokers, you talk of uh, the different problems in COVID-19 protocols. There are already studies regarding this one. And you try to uh, synthesize 100 to 250 articles. That is actually a literature review. And of course, publish also the methodological review of your research. Yung sabi ko po kanina that before a PhD in abroad can proceed to the final defense of his or her thesis or dissertation, that researcher needs to publish the methodology review of the research. Kasi kung alam na alam mo na yung weaknesses at strengths, you already knew what is new with the method, what is not new with the method, definitely you, are, you will be an expert researcher. And of course, you can also publish the results of your research. So from that one research, from that uh, one thesis or dissertation, you can actually generate three publications from this. So yun po yung methodology review. Kasi ang, what we see is sometimes when we coach students to do research, we just let them give a sample of a dissertation or a thesis. You just follow the methods. You just follow the, the process. Where the students will also repeat the method written in the previous study without even doing a review, without even doing a critical analysis about the strengths and weaknesses of that method. So for graduate school deans, you may also require our graduate students as part of the requirements before they can do their research proposal they should also present to you a methodological review of the research. Or even just a common research method, descriptive correlational, for qualitative research, phenomenology, case study, the students or the researchers should be capable enough to understand, to fully understand how to execute that method. And what is good thing here is, if you will try to download articles about the use of these re re qualitative research methods, you can get articles from the uh, from the internet. The author in that uh, particular article, you can also contact him by an email or messenger. And that is what we call another characteristics of a researcher is to establish author intimacy. Because uh, who else can give you better advice to use a certain method than a person who has already conducted and who has already published a research using that particular method. Okay, so next. For a specific, even in qualitative research, you also do sampling. This could be the description of your target population, the research context, even the units of analysis. And of course, uh, if it's not, uh, uh, you, all, you also look on the respondent's profile. But for qualitative research, Pag-uusapan po natin mamaya yon kung paano natin i-execute. And for, of course, in the research method, we talk of the sound data collection method and even the measures. Okay? So reminder lang po ito sa atin. Now, there are tips here. How do you describe your methods of data collection? The first thing is give full details of the methods you use to conduct the research. And if you will use tools, procedures, and materials, this should be reflected in the method part of the research. And provide criteria you use to select the participants or for literature review, the sources. 
the first S. Afterwards, I will walk you through the different database of the internet, particularly Elsevier and Thomson Reuters, so that meron naman kayong output for today. Okay? And that will be the basis of giving you the certificate of participation in this session. Okay? Next, other tips for writing a strong methodology is that, sabi ito kanina, i-remind lang natin, remind, uh, remember that your aim is not just to describe your method, but, but to show how, how and why you applied them and demonstrate that your research was rigorously conducted. In this new normal, we are really bombarded with the problem. How can I, I float questionnaire? How can I retrieve 100% retrieval of my questionnaire because of travel restrictions? For uh, methodological review, no, hindi po kailangan ng pera dito. Because you can already use secondary data available in the internet, available in the government websites, and synthesize all the information from this. You, you can already do a research from this. If funding is a problem for you to conduct a research, we are very thankful that the advance of, advancement of technology, lahat, lahat na ng references na pwede natin makuha nasa internet. Nasa atin na lang kung paano tayo mag-execute ng methodology or ng research. But of course, my suggestion here is, before we go further in using a certain methodology, we must be able to remember that we still need to do a review paper about that methodology. Even just 10 articles about the use of case study method for qualitative research, 20 researches or articles about phenomenology, grounded theory, and all other forms of qualitative research. And the thing there is, though, uh, we also focus on the objectives and the research questions. Now, the, the question is, do we still have questions for research review methodology or for methodological review literature? Yes, we have. Because when we do a, a methodological review of a research, we download 100 to 150, even thousands of articles about that method, and we try to do a bibliographic analysis. We try to, to cluster these articles where uh, what continent uh, these articles came from. Makamamaya, most of the studies conducted, because this is actually the, the, the reason, uh, the, the thing is, we Filipinos are not fond of using qualitative research methodology. That's right. And for us teachers, uh, sometimes doing a qualitative research is, there are judgmental here that uh, uh, that's not really the, 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 the actual process of doing a research. So imagine yung mga comments ng mga ganon. But of course, for strong qualitative research methodology, it justifies the scientific process of gathering data or information. Now, the methodology section should clearly show why your methods suit your objectives and convince your reader. Kung publishable article naman yan, you can convince me as a peer reviewer of your research that, wow, your research is actually the best, uh, or your research actually used the best approach in qualitative research. So these are actually the reasons. No, uh, sometimes I reject papers because even in this in the methodology, they do not even specify the ethical consideration of the research. They do not even specify how did they select the respondents, how what are the inclusion and exclusion criteria in using or in in putting these articles in your research. So all of this should be established. Kaya nga, kung meron man dapat kayong tingtignan dito, is we need, we need to look at the quality of the methodology of our research. Because this is very common for us to understand that if we have faulty methodology in research, later on, we, we gather data, we, we discuss the findings, we do recommendations. It's just a waste of time. And instead of making uh, our target clientele uh, yeah, a way that research could improve their way of living, 
hindi kasi wrong naman yung methodology na ginamit mo. Okay? So, this is actually a reminder for us. Moving on. So, as what I have said, in the research methodology, cite also references and what are the existing studies about that method in research. Confirm that you follow the established practice for this type of research. Discuss how you evaluated the different methodologies and the reason that made you decide why you use such approach. And show that you took, this is actually the, the thing here, a novel methodological approach to address the gap of the literature. Okay? A novel methodological approach. How do a methodological review of your research? <clears throat> okay. Now, remember that when we write our research, even if we are students, we are writing for our audience. We are writing for our panel. We are writing for our uh, benefactors. So consider how much information you need to give and don't go into unnecessary detail. If you are using methods that are standard for your discipline, you probably don't need to give lots of background or justification. Now, this is the thing. What makes a, a research article publishable? Though you use the most common method for qualitative research, what is new with that method? You must be able to, to understand that knowledge uh, is uh, dynamic. No? Even uh, the use of this such method today may be may not be applicable uh, today because uh, of the different processes, uh, the dynamism, no? the dynamics of knowledge there. Napabago-bago talaga tayo. And if you take an approach that is less common in your field, you might need to explain and justify your methodological choices. Your methodology should be clear, well-structured, text that makes an argument for your approach, not just the list of technical details and procedures. So the basic consideration there is, it is a scientifically sound research methodology if one will adopt such method and it has the characteristic of replicability, something that is replicable. And of course, in your research methodology, discuss also the obstacles of your research. It's good that uh, you already, you can uh, state in your method section about the difficulties you encountered in collecting or analyzing data and how you were able to deal with these problems. Show that you minimize the impact of any unexpected obstacles and preempt any major active critics of your approach and demonstrate that you made the research as rigorous as possible. So in this discussing obstacles, you will not uh, encounter problem with this if you do a methodological review of your research. Because uh, even your panel will question you uh, from Northwest, Southeast, you are really capable to answer your panel or your reviewers because you really did a methodological review for your paper. Next. So why qualitative research? Qualitative because it is a way to understand the meaning and experience dimensions of human lives and social worlds. Actually, this is a, a basic concept. It's just a review for us. And central to good qualitative research is whether the research participants' subjective meanings, actions, and social context as understood by them are illuminated. And I got this from the article, Understanding and Evaluating Qualitative Research by Fosse, Harvey, McDermott, and Davidson. Actually, you can download this article, article so that you can have a reference. Now, what we can learn from qualitative research? Because my top, the, topic I, the topic given to me is methodological review. I'd like you to download this book. This is free from the internet. The book from Mac in 2005, Qualitative Research Methods, A Data Collector's Field Guide. 
And with this, the strength of qualitative research is its ability to provide a complex textual description of how people experience a given research issue. It provides information about the human side of an issue that is the often contradictory behaviors, beliefs, opinions, emotions, and relationships of individuals. And for qualitative methods are effective in identifying the intangible factors such as the social norms, socioeconomic status, the gender, the roles, ethnicity, religion, whose role in the research issue may not be readily apparent. This comes with the conclusion that qualitative research answers how and why, unlike quantitative research answers what, okay? Next, uh, a review on some of the qualitative research methods, participant observation. This is common. You do participant observation is appropriate for collecting data on the naturally occurring behaviors in their usual context. In-depth interviews, optimal for collecting data on individuals' personal histories, perspectives, and experiences, particularly when sensitive topics are being explored. And focus groups are effective in eliciting data on the cultural norms of the group and in generating broad overviews of issues or concern to the cultural groups or subgroups represented. I am not saying that I'm expert in qualitative research. I'm uh, presenting this one to provide us a glimpse about the some qualitative research methods. Moving on. These are actually common qualitative study designs. So you will have the walkthrough session this time. And should you wish to use these common research methods like ethnography, phenomenology, grounded theory, participatory action research, or case study for qualitative research, the question here is at what level and in what extent are we capable to execute these research, qualitative research designs? Again, we go back to the methodological review for qualitative research design. Okay? So for ethnography, the portrait of a people or study of the story, culture of a group, usually to develop cultural awareness and sensitivity. Are we capable to execute ethnography in our research? Do we know what are the pros and cons in using ethnography? What are the ethical considerations in using this research design? Even in phenomenology, especially if you would like to study the experiences of AIDS care, the experiences of these COVID patients, the grounded theory going beyond adding to the existing body of knowledge, developing a new theory about the phenomenon, theory grounded on data. Because aside from methodological review, we also have theoretical review. What is new with that theory? What is new with that? What is not yet found about that theory? We have also the participatory action research where individuals and groups researching their own personal beings, sociocultural settings and experiences. And the most common study design is the case study where you have an in-depth investigation of a single or a small number of units at a point in time. Example, evaluation of services, case study on COVID protocols. So these are actually the common qualitative research designs. Now, I'd like you to introduce to the different types of a review, okay? But we will not discuss this in details. So uh, uh, these are systematic review, narrative review, integrative research review, and even theoretical review. But our focus here is methodological review. Okay, so methodological review describes employed research design methods and procedures in educational research, even in public management or other fields of, or other field of specialization. We do methodological review because we would like to highlight the strengths and weaknesses of the methodological tools and the methods we use 
What are the constraints? What are the opportunities in using this method? We also focus on review because we need to, to understand new methodological approaches, modifications of existing methods, discussion of quantitative or even qualitative and data analytic approaches. And empirical data should be used only for an illustration of an approach. The writing style may be adapted to educational researchers rather than methodologists. So therefore, we do literature review because we'd like to search and evaluate the availability of literature in a given subject or chosen topic or area or even a certain method. It is a way to document the state of the art with respect to the subject or topic you are writing about. Take note that we cannot write something, something good unless we are capable to understand what is new and what is not new about our topic. And these are reviews that summarize a methodological issue, and this can provide the researcher the best practice recommendations. So I hope clear po yung ating uh, concept dito. Now, uh, your methodology refers to your author's identification of main methodologies and research techniques used in the field and the analysis of advantages and disadvantages. It is, moreover, the author should be well informed. So na yung sasabi natin with related ideas, theories in the field to research methodologies, or at least, or at least should be possible to recognize how previous researchers' methodological choices affect the research findings. Am I using the most appropriate research method in my research? Madali lang po natin sabihin na use the appropriate research method. But the thing is, how? How? So method methodological review will help us execute how to use such research methods so that our findings, our, our data will be scientifically sound. And the author should justify own methodological choices and perhaps even suggest and justify new research Okay, in some publications, this is what the, the authors are doing when they, at the end of the a certain article, they put here, they put their recommendations for future studies. So the use of deeper level of qualitative research design may be used so that it will validate the findings of the study. So these are the, the, the future research direction for a research article na pwede natin i Okay? Now, let's move on now to the steps of literature review. If we have the topic, we search the literature, we develop the argument, we survey the literature, we critique the literature, and we write the review. If the researcher is not capable to do a literature review for his or her research study, the author is innocent. The author is innocent. So a suggestion there is, you will have the confidence to answer your panel, to deal with your reviewers. If you really did a proper literature review or a methodological review for your research so that nobody could question you. A good thing is you can, you can download articles from the internet for, uh, and these articles having the authors, you can email the authors, you can email the method of your research, they can be your peer reviewers before you conduct a research and they can suggest how you will execute what are really the processes on how you will execute that research method in your study? So again, establish your author intimacy. Okay, If you are saying that they are busy, uh, of course, uh, they might not answer you immediately. But at, uh, of course, for those who will respond to you immediately, well, uh, that is a good way for you to capitalize on. Okay, next. What I am showing you is 
a framework of methodological review. You download the research article of Belhadi, Shari, Turiki, El Fezazi, 2018. Okay, for us Filipino researchers and authors, we are not really fond of, <laughs> of publishing our research methodology. That's why, siguro ito yung reason that why graduate schools in different countries, when in terms of publication, in terms of knowledge generation, they are ahead of us. Because in one research, in one thesis or dissertation, they can have three publications from it. They can have the publication of their findings, they can have the publication of their literature review, and they can have the publication of their methodological review. So this is an illustration. So the preparation of the review, publication consulted are journals. Of course, you need databases here. And if you wish to do a method methodological review on the use of case study for COVID patients, okay, you must have at least keywords for you to search on. Mamaya, i-explore natin yung mga Google Scholar at ibang mga, mga uh, database reputable databases. Then, you have here the database selection. You go to Google Scholar. How many articles you have cited coming from Google Scholar? What about from Science Direct, from Elsevier, from Inder Science, from Emerald, Taylor, Francis, and Spanger? If the researcher do not have, ito kasi yung pan natin eh, if the researcher uh, does not have uh, a methodological review or a literature review or review article in his or her chapter 2, which is actually the review of related literature, weak yung kanyang uh, upbringing, weak yung kanyang knowledge about sa topic niya. So it's good for you to understand because there are three, uh, three uh, dito, outputs coming from your your literature review, what is new with the topic, what is not new with the topic, and what are the future research directions. And after that, selection and identification of publications. So 87 papers from international journals about, for example, about the use of case study on COVID-19 patients. 18 papers from proceedings of international conferences. So just download all of these references. And after that, establish a classification scheme. In such a way, you will evaluate the quality of the papers based on the research methods they use. So establishment of classification scheme, classification of papers according to their content, according to the countries or continent to where these papers were published, according to the year when uh, was this paper uh, published, because in the literature review, you can have the scoping of time. For example, I would like to do a research on methodological review on case studies about smokers. So set the time, whether it's from 2010 to 2021, or studies published from 2000 to 2010 or 2011 to 2020. So that if you are a researcher, this will give you an impression that your paper has international dimension. That's one way to establish internationality. For example, researchers uh, found out that using case study uh, for, for smokers is the most common method. Close uh, parenthesis, author year, author year, author year, author year, close and open parenthesis. So this could be a way that your claim will be strengthened. Kasi scientific dapat ang claim natin dito. Diba? Nasasabi naman natin na we, we do research because it is all about scientific process. Okay. Then after that, classify according to the research methodology employed. What are the methods used? and review and classify the publications. And from this one, you do synthesis already and presto, you can explore other research areas. Okay? 
Now, a walkthrough session is this. I would like you to think of your research topic and a research method you would like to use in your particular study. And you try to answer this pro forma. So literature review matrix, for example, we have numbers one to six, the reference, the study parameters or the variables, the focus and objectives, the gap, or even the findings, whether yung balik nito, findings and the gap. Saan yung nakukuha yung gap? Sometimes, ang gap sa research can be found at the future research direction of the research because uh, international authors would really put the research gap in their study. What are the factors or the steps to be done in order to, to explore more? about that particular problem of inquiry. Okay? Now, uh, kung medyo hindi ka naman techy, you can use the traditional one. You can print references, categorize the references according to the statement of your problem. Okay? And put it in a folder. Ito yung statement problem number one, folder one. Statement problem number two, folder two. Statement problem number three, folder three. Okay, For folder three, these are the literature good to justify statement problem number three. So actually, this is the old uh, method, but we are thankful that we have uh, the new technologies now and it's easy for us no, to do research. Okay, so a walkthrough session is that. Uh, because uh, the topic given to me, conducting methodological review for qualitative research design, I will not end this topic without, malapit natin, 32 na ang time natin, nag-11 kasi na tayo, pero kung hindi natin matapos, at least, eh, pwede na rin kayong, uh, i-excel, explore nyo na lang later. So, a systematic review of research on educational leadership and management in the Philippines. So, the aim of the manuscript, first, Focus on topographical reviews. Focus on the different areas, different parts. For example, you capture studies about leadership and management in education. Then analyze the full English language of educational uh, development and leadership management in the Philippines. So procedure for stage one is go to Google Scholar and Perform this one. Put school, principal, leadership management. If you would like to scope it in Malaysia, put Malaysia. But if you would like to scope it in the Philippines, put Philippines. But if you'd like to scope it in Europe, put Italy, put uh, the countries there. So in such a way, the Google Scholar will generate data about this one. So let's say napindot natin ito sa Google Scholar, it shows that <clears throat> there are around 77,600 results. 77,600 results. So pwede na kayong kumuha ng mga literature doon. And we have here also the anytime, sabi niya dito, may, may, meron kayong custom, custom range it, sort it by relevance, and sort it by, by year. So we'd like to since 2015 to 2020, 2000, 2005 to 2021, pwede lang, pwede lang din. Okay? Then ito, Google Scholar will show you 10 sources per page. It's good if you can perform up to 100 pages of sources. When a source was deemed relevant, please Reference the full APA citation in the next page and download the PDF file. If the PDF file is not available, please indicate a red font color in the reference list. And a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet will be shared to store data extracted from the sources. It's good. You can do <clears throat> this one in an Excel or in Word. In Excel, mas madali lang na gawin. Okay? Then full APA, six style references should be maintained. Depende kung anong version ng APA referencing natin. Okay? Now, uh, 
It's already 10.35. I'd like you to walk through on the online tool, tools for methodological review. And the most common here is we have the Google Scholar as presented a while back. Okay. So, explore po natin yung Google Scholar. This, kasi, uh, why Google Scholar? Kasi ito po yung pinakakaman. <clears throat> Okay, let me share this one. So, for example, you would like to do a methodological review on met, uh, methodological methodological review for case studies about smokers. Okay, so you can see it's we have 258,000 results in 0.13 seconds. And it's up to you how do you scope this one. So let's look at this one. We have the natural recovery from alcohol and drug problems, methodological review of research with suggestion for future directions, Association between tobacco outlet density, smoking among young people, a systematic methodological review. Does smoking by pregnant women influence IQ, birth weight, and developmental disabilities in their infants? A methodological review and multivariate analysis. What is good with this is you can do scoping. So you can put, I would like to do a methodological review of case study on smoking from 2010 to 2020. So 10 years yung, yung kukunin mo na scoping mo. Okay? Then, click search. Okay? All studies that will appear here were published from 2010 to 2020. Kikita po ba ninyo? Okay? So yan. You can already get Topics here, so effects of water pipe to me, tobacco smoking on health outcome system review, systematic review, 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 review. How I wish that uh, for those listening graduate school deans here, you need to require your students, PhD or master's students, to have at least methodological review in their related literature so that they will be capable enough to know and understand what is the trend there, okay? And if you would like to, to scope it from 2021, click 2021, okay? So it's still marami na rin na-publish about methodological review on case studies on tobacco. For example, well, if we go to educational research, you do a methodological review on case studies in reading comprehension. And you would like to do a scoping in Asia. O, continue pag-usapan natin dito. Plus Asia, click search. Okay, so all of these studies will appear. And they will talk about the use of case study in conducting research about reading comprehension. So critical thinking in Asian EFL context, Journal of Asia TFL. Actually, these are already the, the sources. Reading proficiency, comprehension level of grade students, and readability of Afro-Asian learning module. Okay, kung iyan ay gumamit ng case study or method. Okay. So we have here 17,500. What about if you would like to establish internationality of your research in America or in Europe? Put Europe plus Europe. Okay, so here case study for early Italian, easy Italian, empirical study on the impact of translators' strategies and text comprehensibility cross-cultural training, effects of reading strategy, instruction in English as a second language, okay, addressing English reading comprehension difficulties of, uh, by some uh, Somali origin pupils. 
Okay? Kung Amerika naman, put Amerika. So that's how you will scope it. It's good here that your Google Scholar is a very intelligent database wherein you can already sort. You can already sort the year when these studies publish. Okay? So that is the use of Google Scholar. And what is good with the Google Scholar is you click on the quotation there, you can already generate the reference. Just copy it and put this one in your research. So it's good for you to fill out this matrix. Okay? So this will be using Google Scholar, you can already fill out this matrix. Again, uh, if you wish uh, to look on the methodological review on the different problems, because it depends on yan eh. For example, case studies in reading comprehension, case studies on listening comprehension, case studies on speaking. So it depends on the topic. Ninyo. Okay, next. The other one is the use of live gen. Okay? The use of live gen. Just go here. Okay, live gen, uh, live gen. Okay, I'm showing to you. Okay, so this is it. This is the link, live gen li, library genesis. And you would like to, for example, you would like to uh, uh, to understand how to execute a phenomenology qualitative research design. Put phenomenology of students. Sa eduk tayo ha, sa, sa, of students uh, uh, reading comprehension. Subukan nga natin. Then, may mga ano siya dito. Live gen, scientific articles, fiction, magazines. Go to scientific articles. Then, search. So, medyo wala. Now, if you would like to stick with phenomenology as a topic, in your review literature, there are already the topic or the articles you can get. So we have phenomenology of retained excitation, world scientific, phenomenology of the mathematical modeling, phenomenology of the mechanics. So it, it's up to you as a researcher which of these articles you will uh, get or synthesize for your methodological review. Then click live gen. Then you can scan it or you can get it from here. Okay. So this is the uh, this is how to use the live gen. And live gen is can be found also in Google Play or through your laptop. Diretso na yan sa laptop ni. So this is actually the website. Z la uh, another one is Z Library. No, we forget about Z Library. And for example, your your qualitative research design is all about ethnography. Click ethnography, then put search. And you will generate thousands of articles about this one. For semantic scholar, you can get uh, articles from this. Even in Sage journals, just go to journal.sagepublication.com, then click search all Sage journals. And even Taylor and Francis online. So imagine if your students are capable to generate articles, generate uh, researches from these powerful databases. There will be no problems in the research publication. There will be no problems in executing the research method. Because the students is already capable 
to understand the strengths and weaknesses of that method. And even in Elsevier, uh, you must be reminded that there are, there are only two most powerful publishing databases in the world that are considered by Times New Higher Education. We have the Scopus and the Clarivate Analytics for Merle Thomson Reuters. So if you can get references from these, methodological review from these databases, there will be no question on the credibility of the paper. Okay. Other one with U.S. Uh, libraries, like in UCLA library, you can start your remote search here. Find books, journals, and more. If you are looking at the qualitative research method for a particular study, then put the topics here. All data will appear. All articles will appear. Okay. Next. If you would like to contextualize your study, for example, you are doing a research proposal, you, can, uh, you, are doing, you would like to capture the actual uh, scenario in, in, part, in a particular study conducted in Asia about farming, about uh, COVID-19 and development bank uh, software or web, uh, website. In such a way, you can get many references here. It's better that you can get references here in the regional sector, in continental sector, in Asia, studies in Asia, <coughs> and other continents. Another one is if you are doing a research on health, how I wish that you can get also references from Springer Nature. And actually, Springer Nature is both indexed by Scopus and Thomson Reuters. Just search all BMC articles, okay? And BMC, Biomedical Studies. So it's good to get references here about COVID-19 protocols, about uh, the vaccination, social distancing protocols, the drug development processes. So you can get references from this. And what are the protocols in developing drugs, in developing vaccines? And of course, the directory of open access journals. We have this one. Actually, these are all uh, free from the internet. It's just a, a matter for us to do the uh, searching of articles or topics that we would like to to search. So go to doj.org, then find open access journals and articles. So in the talk of open access, these are all open access. No fee, walang bayad. You can download any researches here that are open access. It can be journals or articles. So we have here the journal level and we have here the article level. Just type here the field, just type here the keyword, and it will appear uh, that is, articles will appear. Okay. Then, of course, when you are doing a research on the economics of education, economics of COVID-19, uh, about all of this, go to this website, the National Bureau of Economic Research, and try to look what are the case study research design used of uh, for the different problem of inquiries okay so nandito lang po nber.org then another one is the proceeding of the national academy of sciences of the united states of america for example the institution here you can come up with your account here or you can it's for free okay it's for free so institution philippines Whatever the topics you would like to explore here, physical sciences, social sciences, biological sciences. Okay, but the, the most common this time is studies on COVID-19 protocols and vaccines. Okay, again, we have also the SSRN. Okay, it's just very easy. You just go here to the search engine of the website and click the topic for example grounded theory in covid-19 ground uh, participatory action research on uh, farming 
uh, case studies on HIV or TB, the, the OTS, you can get references from this. And of course, in the Philippines, the Philippine e journals. Okay? So, the Philippine e journals will provide you studies conducted in the Philippines about a particular topic. Okay? Let's try to explore how the Philippine e journal works. Okay, so this is the Philippine e journal. Medyo hindi siya responsive. Medyo hindi siya responsive yung ating internet. Anyway, uh, you can explore it, the Philippine e-journals. For example, you would like to look at the studies or look for the studies utilizing grounded theory in economics, in education, you can just put the keyword there in search, then search for it. And what is good with Philippine e-journal, you can already generate, you can already generate the citation. Ah, meron na, nandito na. So, this is it. This is the Philippine e-journal. For example, grounded theory in education. Click search. Okay, we have here the grounded theory. We have 43 journals and 2,335 articles. Okay, so we have here, you can get references. Grounded theory, a practical overview of the Glacerian school. No, is student resilience has achieved capability, substantive grounded theory in public education. College students, Okay, uh, bahala na kayo kung ano yung i-explore ninyo dyan. A framework of competencies for successful leadership in polling and higher education institutions, a grounded theory approach. You get this one if you would like to understand how this author were able to use grounded theory approach in his or her research. So yeah. read the abstract, you can have here the full text. Okay, then... What's good with this is you can generate the citation. Then it could be APA, MLA, or Turabian. For example, APA. Okay, so this one, copy this. Actually, you can have one uh, review article, methodological article on the use of grounded theory. Or if you are more advanced, you can contact this author and your author to become your uh, reviewer in your research method. Okay, and that's one way to establish author intimacy because we are researchers, we do not live alone. Okay, next. So, there are types of reviews integrative, theoretical, and methodological. We focus today on the methodology, methodological review, examining research methods that have been applied to a particular problem. And actually, uh, let's, let's skip. So other examples, I, I'm just showing to you the protocols in doing this one. Itong mga researches na ito kasi is all about smoking. And the author was able to do a research on the methodological review. What are the methods used? What are the methods used by researchers with regards to smoking? So we have 443 from Medline database and base. Cochrane Library, 46. Then, uh, that's actually the identification. You identify it. Then, he screened it. He got 918 records because the duplicates were removed. And this 918 records is screened. No? It was, again, screened. And 846 not relevant records. So, from that, 
the eligibility is 72 full text publications obtained assessed for eligibility. Then mayroon siyang excluding criteria dito. No? 47 excluded due to 33 smoking not studied, 12 non-English articles, 1 review, 1 duplicated sample. Then 25 studied in smoking as an individual factor. And until such time, through the scientific process of screening of articles, from 918, it became 24 studies. And these 24 studies were used to for meta-analysis, for synthesis. So you may you 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 with this is you don't need funding from this because you get only data from secondary sources. So yung sinasabi nila na hindi ako makapag-research kasi walang walang funding. It's a matter of uh, how you become resourceful in your own way. Okay, so uh, another one is the use of grand design. Okay, another one, this is somewhat different also. So from, for example, from a particular topic, he got uh, published paper from 1872 to 2017, na, uh, decade or century na yung kanyang kinuhang scoping. Ang search engine niya, Scopus Science, Google Scholars. He did manual filtering, categorizing, data analysis, and from that, no, uh, he was able to do process of coding, transcribing, then synthesizing. Okay, then of course, what I am showing you are the diagram. Okay, so 236 records. This is how you will do it. Uh, for example, studies on participatory action research in education. For example, you have 236 records. <laughs> you uh, get from Google Scholar or from databases. Okay. So until such time, 236, it becomes 31 studies. Okay. So again, uh, we have here the tips in writing your methodology. Methodology, the purpose of this section is to present directly, straightforward, has been done, how and when, and how the data were analyzed and presented. This is for the actual research paper. Really? This section should provide all information needed to allow another researcher to judge a study or actually repeat the experiment. The simplest way to organize this section is chronological. Include necessary information about, uh, but avoid unnecessary details that the readers are supposed to know. Then, methods are followed, should be described, usually in chronology or chrono chronological order. Standard methods need be mentioned or described by reference to the literature as long as it is readily available. Modification of standard techniques should be described. Okay, if the method is new, it should be described in detail. And that's the thing that you do a methodological review. Okay, then remember, if you will publish your paper, the journal's editor may ask for additional details of your methodology, if I will be the reviewer of your paper. Okay. Then, of course, uh, we have here a, pub, uh, a book co-authored with Dr. Lenilo Caposo will be the next speaker for today. Research Methodology, Quantitative and Qualitative, a Practical Guide for Researchers from GAPS Identification to Publication. Uh, you can uh, contact us so that if you are interested to get a copy, uh, we will be very willing to provide you. Okay. Of course, a copy of my presentation today will be sent to the organizers for you to have reference. Thank you very much. And I hope this will be a fruitful engagement as we go or as we proceed, you know, as we exist in the knowledge-based economy. Though we, are, we face problems on COVID-19, let us become researchers in our own ways. Thank you very much. Okay, so again, question? there you have it, Dr. Gilbert. Uh, on his discussion about conducting methodology review for qualitative research design. We are not yet done with you, Doc Magulod, as we are about to proceed now to the open forum or the Q&A question or Q&A session or uh, part of our conference today. Okay. Now, our session for this morning is only allocated for two hours. Medyo napasarap po tayo sa napakagandang discussion ni Dr. Magulod. But we will still cater to as many questions as possible depending on the availability of our time. We will select questions raised by our participants here in Zoom 
and in YouTube. And to those who will be top to ask questions, I would like you to introduce yourself first. The institution where you are affiliated with and your question. We are also recommending you to kindly uh, go to slido.com and use that code 112251 or scan that code if you would like your question to be catered in a faster way. Okay, but then again, we also recommend you to ask your questions personally to Doc Magulod. Okay, we are having here or we are receiving positive feedbacks coming from our participants here. Thank you very much, Sir Magulod, for a very comprehensive discussion from Sir Jonathan Paga. Thank you so much from Ma'am Laura Del Cañete. Okay, we also have a feedback coming from Ma'am Ninfa Abawag, thank you so much po. Thanks for the knowledge talk. And again, we have those who are asking questions a while ago on how to get the discussion of or uh, the presentation of Doc Magulod. We will send it to you together with your certificate after you forward to us your, your evaluation form. Okay. Thank you, Sir Magulod, and keep safe, everyone, from Emilio Aguinaldo College. We have also Alvin Polhensha. Thank you, sir, for your informative lecture about the methodology. Kudos to Sir for a very informative and clear explanation. Okay, again, thank you so much, Doc Magulod. You're receiving lots of good uh, feedbacks coming from our participants here in Zoom. We already have here one question appearing in Slido. Sir, is there a possibility of having a bias or having bias or being biased in a literature or methodological review? If yes, how can this be addressed? What do you think of that, Doc Magulod? Okay, uh, a very good question, right? Uh, the possibility of having biased literature. The thing there is, usually we do not have a biased literature or methodological review because you do the protocol, you have the process here. You download articles, then you try to categorize them from countries, here it was published, the method used, but it depends on the scoping. So, depende na lang din yan kung ikaw na researcher is you would like to scope for Asia, for North America, Antarctica, but it's a research. It's all about uh, a review of written literature may not have bias when it is done scientifically. Because uh, Provided, it can be biased if the researcher himself or herself is not or does not uh, follow the process of actual uh, literature review because we have the steps here. Uh, for that, I'd like to suggest the article from, uh, I have a copy here. I'd like to suggest an article coming from the study of schools on the method methodological review of the articles published of Gorgia Educational Research. You, this is a very good article. You can uh, you can download this for free and you can read it uh, by yourself. But as to the bias of literature review, hopefully we avoid biases because it's all about scientifically sound process. Okay, thank you, Doc. Again, we are also recommending you to personally ask your questions. You just need to press the raise hand button if you would like to be recognized. We have here an earlier question here in Zoom. Sir, may uh, to what extent do we establish saturation point in a one-shot interview? In okay. what way the saturation point can be validated in this one-shot interview? Okay, uh, the saturation point for qualitative research is that, for example, you have, you have 20 respondents or 20 uh, key informant interviewers or interviewees, then you stop at nine because from respondent one until, until nine, iisa lang yung sinasabi nila. Iisa lang yung sinasabi nila na response. Iisa lang yung, yung answer nila. So you can establish data saturation for this. Because data saturation is you need not to include all these uh, participants unless you are confident enough that out from this uh, uh, 15 participants, iisa lang naman yung sinasabi nila na answer for that specific question. Actually, uh, you can, uh, as a suggestion, you can read the study of Patton on the data saturation. Patton is a prominent uh, researcher for qualitative research. He's uh, an author and a very good study 
uh, for you to explore, to read more about data saturation. In, in most cases, uh, data saturation comes with similar or the pattern of what they are saying is similar. So your data is already saturated. That you need not to include more responses coming from other respondents because the same pattern or same level of thinking is being uh, is, is being exhibited already in the process of your interviews. Okay, so that's my answer. Go study the the data saturation in which how Patton is capable to to use qualitative research. Okay, thank you, Doc. We have here another question appearing in slido.com. Is there a standard framework or procedure in conducting a literature review, particularly methodological review? What do you think of that, Sir Gilbert? Oh, yeah. Uh, actually, there is no such standard, but uh, we just follow the format wherein we put the references. We put the, the, the problem of inquiry, just what I have presented a while back in the previous slide. Then it is, it's just a template. Then it's just also a matter of presenting a table in a tabular form. If you have uh, 800 studies, then you need to put that in a table. That in these 800 studies, there are around 600 published in 2010. There are around uh, uh, 40 published in 2011. So it's a table mo rin lang naman yan eh, when you put this into an article. But other universities are requiring students to do a literature review matrix. We have what we call a literature review matrix. You okay. can search that in the internet. Matrix, a pro forma of a methodological review. Okay, thank you, Doc. We have, okay. I think, the, the this question about what can you suggest to those who are new to research. We will have it as a last question for you, Doc. Can we have here another question? Good day, sir. Can you suggest some publishable journals? that are low cost or much better free. I think Sir Magulo do, I was able to forward us several links a while ago, but what do you think of uh, the question, sir? Well, uh, there are around uh, many researches, right? Uh, on, on that are free and low cost. But for open access journals, Ito kasi eh, when we publish, we have open access and subscription base. Kung open access kasi yung journal mo, the higher yung na masite siya. At kung subscription talaga, you need to subscribe before you can publish. Pero as to the low-cost journals, there are journals that are offering free publication. Marami rin yung mga journals na mababa ang bayad, pero most of these journals takes time to publish. Yo, medyo mahaba yung panahon na hantay-hantayin mo compared to those journals na talagang may bayad. Pero there is no much difference with it. Uh, if you are not really rushing to finish your degree and your requirement is a publishable article, uh, if you are not rushing, go to locos or free journals. But if you are rushing, as long as you can verify that it's already Scopus or Thomson Reuters, then grab it, publish it. Anyway, uh, it's just an investment for your professional development to my bayad. Okay. I can send so, you link. I can send you lists. Uh, you can contact me. Uh, we we normally have those who would look for Sage or Read, uh, Elsevier for references. Uh, in my case, for example, Doc, we have in our university, we provide or our library is providing links also to the students for them to have also access to those uh, reputable um uh, providers of known journals and researches. Okay, so we have here from, um, uh, I don't know, from Sir or Mom Charlie Dion. If I reviewed the methodologies of articles related to the problem I am interested in, would I still adopt the IMRAD? I, mm -hmm. uh, what do you think of that, Sir? Well, uh, yes, yes, uh, you can adopt the IMRAD format because most of, most of the publish, uh, if you wish to publish, this is the question, ma'am, or sir. If you wish to publish the methodology call review of your research, put that in IMRAD format because they will not accept it if it's not in IMRAD format. That's actually the, the, the main format for publication, the IMRAD format. Adapt the IMRAD format. Okay, thank you, Sir Charlie or Ma'am Charlie. Uh, we have it here, an interesting question. Uh, sir, not exactly related to the main topic, but I just want to ask, can we still publish 
uh, to other journals if our study has already been published to another journal? Okay. Uh, there is this context in research publication. We call it as self-plagiarism. <laughs> Plagiarism kasi ang papasok dyan kung na-publish na yung research mo, then pinablish mo pa sa ibang journal. Because it should not be Uh, this should not be the way because once you already publish your journal, may sinasabi naman yun eh. Before you submit your journal, sinasabi na your your article must not have been in consideration for review or publish already. So kung na-publish at ipapublish mo pa, uh, kasalanan po yun sa sa research publication ethics natin. Unless unless uh, you can get component of your published research kung medyo malawak-lawak yung variables mo, Uh, you can actually okay. one research. Sabi ko nga, you can have three publications depending on the nature of your variables and depending also on the literature or the methodological review of your research. Pero if you publish a similar research to other journal that is already published, hindi po pwede yon. Kasi may copyright na rin po yon. Wala po tayong sinatawag na double copyright. Okay. Okay. So actually we've heard several cases of that doc. And again that is I guess not in conformity to the main theme that we are that we have in this uh in this virtual conference. Okay? Uh thank you again to Sir Charlie and to the anonymous question. We have here another question. Sir, is there a possibility to be punished of plagiarism even if you provided a citation? I okay. don't know how to expound articles. that question, sir. <laughs> okay, for research articles like us, uh, you need not to copy or to copy and paste. Yun ka papapasok. Uh, then even though sinight mo yung kwan, kung gusto mo talaga i-publish yung research mo, kasi nadetect rin yan ng 13 or ng plug scan natin. Eh, remember, journals, meron silang uh, criteria of these papers to be accepted. It should be below 14% or 15% similarity index. Pero sa ibang context naman, kung, ba, kung thesis naman at hindi masyadong strict to yung university ninyo, medyo wala pa kayong turn it in, supposedly lahat kasi dapat ng thesis at dissertation, dumadaan yun sa turn it in or sa plug scan, wala namang kwan doon, okay lang din. Pero usually, the ideal there is hindi dapat. No? Uh, you need to you need to reword it based on your own contention then put the author okay Para thank you doc okay po. okay so we have here another question in our chat function from zel oynotna which methodology is easy or is comprehensive or easy to understand or easy to make what do you think of that doc Is it qualitative methodology or quantitative <laughs> methodology? How okay. do you look at that, Doc? If you really patient enough, go to qualitative method. But if you are doing evaluation or a simple, at yung time kasi dyan eh, you can go to quantitative methodology. But the suggestion here is uh, mix yeah. Actually, there is no such thing as best research methodology. No, it depends ta- apan talaga sa problem ninyo. Okay? So, as to the, which is easier, kung talagang i-follow mo yung scientific process, talagang time really is needed here and your critical thinking as a researcher. Kasi research na ito. Okay, we will cater uh, another question. I think it would be ideal also, again, for participants to personally ask questions to Sir Gilbert by pressing the raise hand button, if you would like. I think it would be ideal for us to have it become more interactive. So again, we are recommending you to press the raise hand button if you would like to personally ask a question. We have here, let's go back here to slido.com. Sir, good day. Sir, there, uh, was there a specific length or number of paragraphs needed for the methodology part in a publishable paper following IMRAD format? What do you think okay. of that, Doc? Uh, we do not, as to the number of paragraphs, no, no question with it, but to the number of words. If you wish to publish a paper, it should be uh, 7,000 to 8,000 words, including references. So again, uh, that's it. So 
normally we the, a journal is providing a specific number of words in dealing with a uh, publication, not on the paragraphs. Okay, so we have it here. Another anonymous a person asking a question. How uh, I think I think this question is very ideal for our afternoon speaker. The question is how to properly do a mixed method. But may again to our anonymous uh, person here, question asking us this, that question. Uh, Sir Capulso is the one in charge uh, on a topic about mixed method. So I think it would be ideal for you to raise that question again in the afternoon. Okay. So we have another question from Sir Charlie Dion. Sir, would I use the first person point of view in writing qualitative research? Is this course okay. analysis a qualitative? What do you think of that talk? Okay. This course analysis is qualitative as long as you do not use the frequency, you do not use the, you do not count. <laughs> but uh, as to your question, uh, would I use the first person point of view in writing qualitative research? Generally, we use the third person point of view when we write research. But if the respondents or the, the one you asked no, uh, sabi niya yung kanyang answer at ikokot mo directly yung sinabi niya, that's the time that you will use the first person point of view. Yun po yung pan natin. But generally, see to it na nasa na third person point of view tayo para uh, we are narrating, para we are narrating, telling to the audience about the findings of our research. Okay, I think we will cater two last questions and we will have another question here in slido.com. Another anonymous person here the question is, in having the RRL, is it really required to observe five-year recency of the article's publication? Or what is the ruling on the years to be included? What do you think of that, Doc? Okay. Uh, it depends upon the research manual of your, for example, you're in graduate school, in your university. But usually, for research article publication, 10 years back, 10 years back. Uh, five years, ibig sabihin naman kung talagang ang gusto nila, ang gusto nung, nung din nyo, ang gusto nung advisor nyo, nung panel nyo, is talagang the most recent na talaga. Then you get five years back. But in in writing, in, in thesis or in dissertation, 10 years back talaga naman is the acceptable. Depende yan sa policy ng university po. Okay, thank you, Doc. Uh, we have here another question. Is there a software available to filter eligible studies to be finally included in the review or really has to be done manually? What do you think of that, Doc? <laughs> okay, sir. Uh, provided that you have already the databases for you to search on, you manually search for it. Because as of the moment, we do not have the, the AI tool that we can really synthesize the review method or uh, literature review for us. No? Okay. So we still have many questions appearing here in Slido, sir. And I think it would be ideal for you to again go back to the question provided to you a while ago about words to those who are who would like to venture into research and by also summarizing the two remaining questions appearing here about suggestion po on how to properly transcribe information from interviews and the kind of system do we have to detect plagiarism. What do you think of that, Doc? Okay. In, in transcribing information from interviews, you have this online software. You, you can even use NBBook for this. And you had the TAMI, you, you, doon sa, available siya doon sa, sa website that can detect, uh, that can transcribe uh, yung yung responses ng mga interviewers ninyo. Marami po tayong tools sa internet. Okay? Uh, you can have the the Tami Pro or I can send you na lang list para hindi tayo magtagal dito. Marami po. Marami. Even just recording of from your cell phone then i-transfer mo siya doon sa sa Quan, sa sa data, sa internet or doon sa tool na tatranscribe niya. Hindi na ka, ka na rin mahihirapan doon. And what kind of system do we have to detect plagiarism? Kung ang university ninyo naka-subscribe naka siya sa Turnitin, mahal po yon doon po. Pero kung gusto nyo ng free, go to Kitex. Kitex. Q-U-E-T-E-X-T. Kitex. Available po yan sa internet. 
feedbacks. Okay, can I have final words from Dr. Gilbert? And even the Grammarly, meron din pong madarita. Okay, Doc, can we have a concluding words from you? And also your words of encouragement to those who would like to venture into research. So thank you very much, dear participants from the uh, different regions of the country. I hope that uh, through this uh, sharing, knowledge sharing for today can uh, allow yourselves to become researchers in your field of specialization. And I'd like to thank the, I would like to take this opportunity to thank PSA, the Philippine Institute of 21st Century Educators for trusting me to share my knowledge on conducting uh, methodological review for qualitative research design. Marami pong salamat and uh, wag po kayong kwan. Tapusin po ninyo yung two-day conference natin on research because other speakers will also share life-changing ideas for you to develop your research skills. Thank you very much and God bless us all. Stay safe. Okay, thank you, Gilbert, uh, Doc Gilbert. Okay, and that ends our question and answer portion. We will try to reply to some of your queries raised after the end of this session. We actually have those who are uh, asking questions in the chat function of uh, of chat function here in Zoom, and we failed to cater their questions. Can we have like a contact or uh, any detail of Sir Gilbert on how they can personally ask your questions, sir? We okay. will be again. We will, uh, Doc. Do we have like a, an email address or any detail where they can personally ask questions? We have those that we failed to cater in the chat function. Again, this is to inform everyone here that we provided priority to those who are uh, to those questions appearing in slido.com. Okay. Again, that answer question and answer portion. We will try to reply to some of your queries again. Raise after the end of the session. Let us proceed now to the giving of certificate. PIES I-21, or Philippine Institute of 21st Century Educators Incorporated, Zaraga, Iloilo, Philippines, awards this certificate of recognition to Dr. Gilbert Pasqua Kabilangan Magulod for imparting his invaluable time, resources, and expertise as resource speaker on the topic conducting methodology review for qualitative research design during the conduct of National Virtual Conference for Research with the team Retooling Research Skills for Professional Credibility and Integrity in the Academe. Accorded the 16th day of July 2021 via Zoom video conferencing, live stream on POMI YouTube channel and PIES I-21 Facebook page. Signed, Ricky A. Kibinko, MATM LPT, Virtual Conference Director, and Emmy John P. Indonila Palmani, MAD LPT, National President, PIES I-21. Again, congratulations to Dr. Gilbert Pasqua Kabilangan Magulo Jr. for making this conference a successful one. Virtual round of applause to Dr. Gilbert. And Doc, we are looking everyone. forward to seeing you again, hopefully face to face already, so that we uh, we can have direct uh, access to you, sir. Before we finally close our morning session for this conference, let me inform you that for you to get the certificate of participation for our morning session, you are expected first to submit the evaluation form. A separate certificate and evaluation form will be forwarded to you in the afternoon. May I request everyone now to kindly open your camera for a quick photo op with our speaker. So, Jean, I would like you to facilitate. Again, I am requesting everyone to kindly open your camera as we are now to have a quick photo of, of our morning session with our speaker, Dr. Gilbert Magulod. Are we all set, Sir Jean? Thank you.
We have those who are asking a question and they would like, uh, they provided also their own email here. Again, we will be sending to you your certificate of participation right after, or we will try to send it to you right after the session on your own email address. Okay, so Jean, can we have now? Okay, so panel one, so ready one, two, three, and smile. Why did why man? Okay, so panel two. Okay, panel three. Okay, panel four. Okay, panel five. Uh, panel six. Uh, seven. And last panel eight. Again, thank you everyone. Stay safe everyone. See you 2 p.m. this afternoon. God bless and congratulations. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Congratulations, We have here a question about Mamaya Papuang survey. Again, in every session we have, you are expected to send the evaluation form for you to receive a certificate of participation in every session. Thank you. Again, we have forwarded to you the evaluation link. You may we have those who are struggling to 
uh, go to the link. Again, kindly refresh. And we were able also to send to you the link together with, or the evaluation form together with your uh, with your code or Zoom code. Thank you.